Hello, and welcome to your Microbiology Bio 203 video lecture on diseases of the cardiovascular system and lymphatic system. I'm Mr. Kennedy, and I will be your guide as we explore these topics. To begin, we'll review the basic anatomy of each system. The cardiovascular system is the system that circulates blood through the body tissues. It includes the heart and associated arteries, veins, and capillaries. It delivers substances to and removes substances from our cells. This is a simplistic diagram of the cardiovascular system. The lymphatic system works in close proximity to the cardiovascular system. The lymphatic system is filled as plasma leaves blood capillaries to become interstitial fluid. Lymph capillaries transport interstitial fluid or lymph to lymph vessels, also known as our lymphatics and lymph nodes. The Lymph can pick up microorganisms and other infectious agents, transport it to lymph nodes where fixed macrophage B cells and T cells will dispatch the pathogens. This picture illustrates the close connection between the lymph system and your cardiovascular system. Next, we'll examine bacterial diseases of the cardiovascular and lymphatic system. As we begin, please note that there are a few vocabulary terms that you should be familiar with septicemia, sepsis, lymphangitis, severe sepsis, and septic shock. Septicemia is acute illness due to the presence of pathogens or their toxins in the blood. Sepsis causes systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Lymphangitis is most well noted by inflamed lymph vessels. Severe sepsis can lead to a decrease in blood pressure and dysfunction of at least one organ. And septic shock occurs when we have sepsis and uncontrolled decreased blood pressure. Gram-negative sepsis, also called endotoxin shock, is caused by endotoxins or lipopolysaccharides, which lead to a severe drop in blood pressure. Antibiotics often worsen the condition as they kill bacteria. Endotoxins are embedded in the cell wall structure of these gram-negative organisms. As the antibiotics break down the cell wall, you release more endotoxin into circulation. So antibiotics will worsen the condition. Treatment involves neutralizing the lipid polysaccharide components and inflammatory causing cytokines. Gram-positive sepsis. Gram-positive sepsis is caused by potent exotoxins that cause toxic shock syndrome. These exotoxins are common in hospital acquired infections involving enterococcus. Enterococcus are organisms that inhabit the colon. They can colonize wounds and the urinary tract and are resistant to many antibiotics. Thoropal sepsis is called thoropal fever and childbirth fever is caused by streptococcus pyrogenes. It can be transmitted to the mother during childbirth <clears throat> and infects the uterus and progresses to an infection of the abdominal cavity. Bacterial infections of the heart. Bacterial infections of the heart include endocarditis, subacute bacterial endocarditis, acute bacterial endocarditis, and pericarditis. Endocarditis is the inflammation of the endocardium. Subacute bacterial endocarditis impairs the function of heart valves and is often caused by alpha hemolytic streptococci from an oral or tonsil infection. Acute bacterial endocarditis is caused by Staphylococcus aureus. Pericarditis is the inflammation of the sac around the heart and is caused by streptococci. Rheumatic fever is an autoimmune complication of streptococcus pyrogenes. Streptococcus pyrogenes can lead to inflammation of the heart valves, which can cause an immune reaction against the streptococcal M protein. It can also cause subcutaneous nodules at the joints. Tularemia is caused by Francella, which is a gram-negative rod. This is a zoonotic disease transmitted from rabbits, ticks, and deer flies. It creates an ulcer at the site of entry. The bacteria reproduce in phagocytes and enlarge the regional lymph nodes. The mortality is usually less than 30%. Brucellosis, or undulant fever, is caused by Brucella species. These are aerobic gram-negative rods. Brucella 
can grow and be transmitted by elk, bison, cows, swine, goats, sheep, and even camels. It can be transmitted via milk or from infected animals from contact with infected animals. It persists in the reticuloendothelial system and evades phagocytes. Undulant fever can cause malaise, night sweats, muscle aches, but it's not usually fatal. Anthrax. Anthrax is caused by Bacillus anthracis, which is a gram-positive endospore-forming aerobic rod found in soil. <clears throat> it primarily affects grazing animals. The spores are introduced to the body, are taken up by macrophage and germinate. Bacteria enter the bloodstream and release their toxins. It can be treated with ciprofloxacin and doxycycline and prevented by vaccination of livestock. Bacterial spores um, are where we get our virulence factors from. The bacteria produces a number of virulent factors once it becomes active. There is a protective antigen that binds the toxins to the target cells to permit their entry. Edema toxin is also produced, causing local swelling and interferes with phagocytosis. They produce a lethal toxin which can target and kill macrophage, an amino acid capsule that avoids an immune response. There are cutaneous anthrax, gastrointestinal anthrax, and inhalational or pulmonary anthrax. Cutaneous anthrax enters through a minor cut and has about a 20% mortality rate without treatment. Gastrointestinal anthrax enters the body from ingestion of undercooked contaminated food and has a 50% mortality rate. Pulmonary or inhalational anthrax is contracted by inhaling spores. The bacteria enter the bloodstream, progress into septic shock, and has a nearly 100% mortality rate. This is an anthrax lesion on the skin. Gangrene. Gangrene is associated with ischemia or loss of blood supply to tissues. As a result of ischemia, loss of blood supply to the tissue, necrosis often follows, which is the death of the tissue. As the tissue dies, it can literally begin to rot, which is what gangrene is all about. The death of the surface tissue leading to the death of the soft tissue underneath as the tissue literally rots away. Gas gangrene is caused by Clostridium, a gram-positive endospore-forming anaerobic rod. It grows in the carotid tissues and produces toxins that move along muscle bundles. Treatment includes the surgical removal of all necrotic tissue and or the use of a hyperbaric chamber. This is what gangrene looks like. Systemic diseases caused by bites and scratches make up about 1% of ER visits. Dog bites make up 80% of reported bites. Cats, about 10%. Cat bites have a higher infection rate than do dog bites. Pasturella, a gram-negative rod, causes sepsis and is common from animal bites, along with Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, and Cornobacterium. Cat scratch disease is caused by Bordonella. This is an aerobic gram-negative rod. It inhabits cat red blood cells and is carried in the blood of 50% of cats. It multiplies in the digestive system of cat fleas. Cat claws, they're contaminated with flea feces, and then they scratch humans, and that's how it's transmitted. Once in a human, it can form a papillae at the infection site and swollen lymph nodes. The disease is usually self-limiting. Rat bite fever is transmitted via rat bites. Rat bite fever is caused by streptobacillary organisms that are found in North America. Streptobacillus mono, monoformis is a filamentous gram-negative pliomorphic fastidious organism. Once transmitted, the infected individual will exhibit fevers, chills, muscle pain, 
and a mortality of about 10%. Spiral fever is caused by Spirillium minus, and it's similar to Streptobaciliary rat bite fever. The plague is caused by Yersinia pestis. It's a gram-negative rod and can be transmitted by the rat flea. The rat flea is endemic to rats, ground squirrels, and prairie dogs. Close contact with rat fleas or the rats themselves can put one at risk for infection by Yersinia pestis. Bacteria block the flea's digestive tract. Flea bites the host and ingested blood is regurgitated into the host. The bacteria enter the bloodstream and pro pro uh, proliferate in the lymphatic tissue, causing intense swelling called bubbles. Bubonic plague is bacterial growth in the blood and lymph. It's the most common form of plague and has a 50 to 75 percent mortality rate. Septicemic plague causes septic shock due to bacteria in the blood. Pneumonic plague is caused by bacteria in the lungs. It's easily spread by airborne droplets and has nearly a 100% mortality rate. Antibiotic prophylaxis is the best chance for treating this once exposed. Relapsing fever is caused by Borrelia species, which is a spirochete. It's transmitted by soft ticks that feed on rodents. It causes a high fever, jaundice, rose-colored skin spots, and can have successive relapses, which are less severe than the initial infection. It's treated with tetracycline. Lyme disease, or Lyme borreliosis, is caused by Borrelia which is the most common tick-borne disease in the United States. Field mice are the most common reservoir for Lyme disease. The nymphal stage of the organism, Ixodes tick, feeds on mice and infects humans. The ticks also feed on deer, but the deer are not infected. The ticks must attach two to three days to transfer the bacteria. This map indicates where it is common. This graphic indicates the life cycle of the organism from tick to human to deer. The first phase of Lyme disease is characterized by a bullseye rash and flu-like symptoms. The second phase exhibits irregular heartbeats, encephalitis, facial paralysis, and memory loss. The third phase is characterized by arthritis due to an immune response. Lyme disease can be diagnosed using ELISA or indirect fluorescent antibody tests or Western blot and is treated with antibiotics. It's much more difficult to treat in the later stages than in the early stages. This is an example of the bullseye rash. Ehrlichosis and anaplasmosis. Human Monocytrophic ehrlichosis, or HME, is caused by ehrlichia, a gram-negative, rickettsia-like, obligatory intracellular organism. These organisms form aggregates, or morulae, in monocytes. And the vector is the lone star tick. The reservoir is the white-tailed deer. Human granulocytic anaplasmosis, or HGA, is caused by anaplasma. The vector is the exodes tick. Both cause flu-like diseases and have a fatality of less than 5%. Typhus. Typhus is caused by rickettsia species. It's an obligate intracellular parasite and infects the endothelial cells of the vascular system, can block and rupture your small blood vessels, and is spread by arthropod vectors. Typhus fever is caused by rickettsia proezechiae. It's carried by body louse, pelodic Paludiculus hamanus corpus. It's transmitted when louse feces are rubbed into the bite wound from the louse. It causes prolonged fever and a rash of red spots due to subcutaneous hemorrhaging. It can be treated with tetracycline.
endemic marine typhus is caused by rickettsia typhi. It's transmitted by the rat flea. Rodents are the common host and has a mortality of less than 5%. It's clinically indistinguishable from typhus fever and again can be treated with tetracycline. Rocky Mountain spotted fever is tick-borne typhus carried by rickettsia rickettsia and spread by wood ticks and dog ticks. It causes a measle-like rash, except that the rash also appears on the palms and soles of your feet. Without early diagnosis, it has a mortality rate of approximately 20%, and again, it can be treated with tetracycline. Next, we'll consider the viral diseases of the cardiovascular and lymphatic system. Burkitt's lymphoma is a viral disease of the cardiovascular system. It causes a tumor of the jaw. It's most common childhood cancer in Africa and is caused by the Epstein-Barr virus or human herpes virus 4. Malaria suppresses the immune response to this virus and increases the likelihood of contracting the disease. Infectious mononucleosis is caused by Epstein-Barr virus as well. Childhood infections are often asymptomatic and can be transmitted via saliva and it has an incubation period of four to seven weeks. Symptoms include fever, sore throat, swollen lymph nodes, and enlarged spleen. It replicates in resting memory B cells. Other diseases of the Epstein-Barr virus include multiple sclerosis, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and nasopharyngeal cancer. Cytomegalovirus is next. Cytomegalovirus is human herpes virus 5. It can remain latent in white blood cells. Infected cells will swell and form owl's eyes inclusions. Those who have contracted cytomegalovirus may be asymptomatic or mild in adults. Cytomegalic inclusion disease, or CID, is caused as this organism is transmitted across the placenta. It causes mental retardation or hearing loss in newborns. It can be transmitted sexually, via the blood, saliva, or by transplanted tissue. Chikungunya fever is caused by chikungunya virus. It's related to the virus causing western and eastern equine encephalitis and is transmitted by mosquitoes. This virus causes high fever, severe joint pain, rash, blisters, but has a low death rate. It's introduced into the western hemisphere in 2013. There are a half a million cases in the Caribbean could soon become established in the United States due to the presence of the vector. Yellow fever. Yellow fever virus is injected into the skin by Andes aegyptii. This causes yellow fever causes chills, headache, nausea, vomiting, and a fever. The name yellow fever comes from the fact that individuals with this will often have a yellow hue to their skin or jaundice due to liver damage. It's endemic in the tropics. There is no treatment, but an attenuated vaccine is available. Dengue and severe dengue. Milder than yellow fever, transmitted by the same organism, is dengue and dengue fever. It is endemic to the Caribbean and tropical environments. Those contracting it may stay asymptomatic or have mild to severe symptomology. Mild dengue will have very mild symptoms. Severe dengue can have bleeding and organ impairment. There is no animal reservoir, no vaccine, or effective drug treatment. Emerging viral hemorrhagic fevers include the Marbog virus or green monkey virus. It's transmitted from African monkeys and can cause headache, high fever, vomiting, profuse bleeding, and internally, profuse bleeding internally and externally. Lassa fever. Lassa fever is caused by 
arena virus, which is found in rodent urine, is common in West Africa. It's similar to Argentine and Bolivian hemorrhagic fevers in South America and whitewater arroyo virus in California. Ebola hemorrhagic fever is caused by the Ebola virus. The Ebola virus is similar to the Marburg virus. The reservoir for Ebola virus is the cave dwelling fruit bat near the Ebola River in Africa. Ebola hemorrhagic fever is spread by contact with infected body fluids. It damages blood vessel walls and interferes with coagulation. Blood leaks into the surrounding tissue and it has a mortality rate of about 90%. Hantavirus. Hantavirus is a pulmonary uh, syndrome, which is caused by the sin nombre virus. The fatal pulmonary infection that ensues causes the lungs to fill with fluids. It is found in the Western United States, Asia, and Europe, and can also affect your kidneys. Next, we'll look at protozoan diseases of the cardiovascular and lymphatic system. Chagas disease. Chagas disease, or American trypanosomiasis, is caused by the trypanosoma cruzii. This is a flagellated protozoan whose reservoir exists in rodents, possum, and armadillo. The vector is the revnubi bug, or kissing bug. The bug defecates trypanosomes into the bite wound of humans. The chronic form of the disease causes mesophagus, and megacolon, and death due to heart damage. Therapy is difficult due to the trypanosome multiplying intracellularly. Toxoplasmosis is caused by Toxoplasma gondii, undergoes its sexual phase in cat intestines. Its oocysts will shed into the cat feces. Contact with the cat feces or undercooked meat introduces the oocysts into the intestines. Oocysts will then form trophozoites and invade cells and may become a chronic infection. The primary danger is congenital infection, which can lead to stillbirth and neurological damage. Malaria is caused by plasmodium parasites and transmitted by the Anopheles mosquito. It infects 300 to 500 million globally two to four million people die from it annually. There are four major forms, Plasmodium vivax, ovale, malariae, and falciparum. Vivax is the mildest and most prevalent form and can stay dormant in the liver. Ovale and malariae are benign and restricted geographically. Falciparum is the most deadly, causes severe anemia, blocks capillaries, affects the kidneys, liver, and brain. The, in order to contract malaria, one must be bitten by a mosquito. The mosquito bite transmits the sporozoite into the bloodstream. It enters the liver cells where it undergoes schizogony, resulting in the release of merozoites into the bloodstream. The merozoites infect the red blood cells and again undergo schizogony. They will then rupture the infected red blood cell, releasing toxic compounds, causing paroxysms or of chills and fever. Some merozoites develop into gametozoites and are taken up by the mosquito, repeating the cycle. This is the cycle of malaria infection. It's very difficult to develop a vaccine for malaria because plasmodium can rapidly mutate and evade the immune system. It is also difficult to diagnose without sophisticated equipment. Prophylaxis includes taking drugs like chloroquine. Treatment includes taking drugs like artemisinin. And prevention involves using bed nets and attempting to eradicate the mosquito. Leishmaniasis is transmitted by female sandflies. Female sandfly transmits leishmaniasis from their saliva when they bite you. Leishmaniasis comes in several forms. Each has its own unique way of creating symptoms and working within a host. Leishmania donvinae invades the internal organs. Leishmania tropica forms papillae that ulcerate 
and leave scars. Enlishmani brazilianus affects the mucous membranes. Babesiosis is caused by Babesia microti and carried by the Ixodes tick. It resembles malaria. The parasites replicate in red blood cells, cause fever, chills, and night sweats. It can be treated with azithromycin. <clears throat> Finally, we have helminthic diseases of the cardiovascular and lymphatic system. Schistosomiasis is an excellent example of a helminthic disease of these systems. It's caused by small flukes called schistosoma. Feces carrying eggs get into your water supply. Snails serve as the intermediate host. Sicaria release from the snail and literally burrow into the skin of humans. Eggs shed by the adult schistosomes in the host lodge in tissues and form granulomas. Schistosoma hematobium is a urinary schistoma schistosomiasis. Schist schistosoma japonican is an intestinal form and found in Asia. And Schistosoma mansoni is found in South America. This concludes our coverage of diseases of the cardiovascular system and lymphatic system.